Alright, napaikot ni Aristotle for 1,500 years ang mga tao upang papaniwalain na ang Earth yung center ng universe. Pero, may mga taong nag-aral, prinug na mali si Aristotle. At isa po dyan, si Johannes Kepler. Alamin po natin, paano nga ba prinug ni Johannes Kepler na mali si Aristotel. Tunghayan nyo po yan dito sa video ito. Happy learning everyone! Hello, good day! Everyone, welcome to Surfax Learning Channel. For today's video, I would like to discuss to you the birth of modern astronomy. Last time, I have I have a video lessons about how come to realize that the Earth is not the center of the universe, and it was Democritus, Ptolemy, Aristotle. Some of those Greeks and some of the, those Greeks who do not believe or who believe rather that the earth is the center of the universe. And later on around 16th century, 15th century onwards, some philosophers, scientists found out that it's not the earth that's It's not the earth which is the center of all in the universe, but it's the sun which is the center of everything. At tinawag nila itong heliocentric universe. And one of it is Johannes Kepler. Isa po siya sa mga nag-prove na hindi yung earth yung center of universe, but the sun. Therefore, our learning target For this video is to explain how Johannes Kepler came up with the three laws of planetary motion. So we will discuss Kepler's law of planetary motion. Hopefully after this video you could describe Kepler's law of planetary motion and relate each Laws how and determine how Kepler proved these laws. So just to have an idea, to have a timeline on how this modern astronomy started. If you can still remember Nicholas Copernicus. He is the one who opposes the idea of Aristotle, which is after 1,500 years or lasted for 1,500 years na ipinamulat sa mga tao na yung earth ang sentro ng lahat. Yung moon, yung sun ay umiikot po yan sa earth, sabi po nila Aristotle. Ilalagay ko na lang sa link yung video about that. So, yan po yan. Pero, itong si Nicholas Copernicus, <clears throat> yung kanyang idea is parang na, na, ano, na set aside because of Tycho Brahe. Although si Tycho Brahe, bagamat yung kanyang universe is uh, geocentric. Bakit geocentric? Si, si Tycho Brahe, naniniwala na tama umiikot yung mga ibang heavenly bodies, planets, sun, moon sa earth ay sa sun rather pero for for Johannes or for Tycho Brahe yung yung sun umiikot sa earth <coughs> ayan po yan, yan po yung age 15 a year yung time frame rather or period 1546 to 1601 Galileo Galilei isa sa mga nagprove which is the first scientist to use telescope na tama si Nicholas Copernicus, tama si Johannes Kepler. 
I mean, tama si Nicolas Copernicus. Mali si Tycho Brahe. Si Johannes Kepler. Ayan, estudyante po yan ni Tycho Brahe. Yun, siya po yung ating subject matter for this video. And si Isaac Newton, isa din po siya sa nag-prove bakit heliocentric universe yung mayroon po tayo because of his laws of motion. So ito po, Nicolas Copernicus published his work in 1543 stating the solar system is sun-centered opposing the belief the earth was the center of the system of, of, our, of our system. However, Tycho Brahe, actually Tycho Brahe was Nicholas Copernicus' teacher. I think he was an assistant. Uh, Tycho Brahe, uh, Nicholas Copernicus is assistant of Tycho Brahe. Tycho Brahe studied the planets and stars without telescope. He used a huge apparatus, uh, katulad ng ipinapakita po dito, to record the positions of heavenly bodies. After many years, of study, he concludes that the sun and moon orbit Earth while all other planets orbit the sun. <clears throat> Excuse me po. Ito na po si Johannes Kepler. Si Kepler was an assistant of Brahe and inter, uh, inherited Brahe's work upon his death. Nung namatay na si Tycho Brahe, Eh, si Johannes Kepler, assistant. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng ginagawa ni Tycho Brahe, alam ni Johannes Kepler. Kepler believed the sun was our center point and that he could decipher the distance and motion of our planets. He analyzes Tycho Brahe's work along with his own studies in painstakingly for 20 years or nearly 20 years. Kepler did not give up on his idea and finally he presented laws of planetary motion. So ano nga ba yung mga laws of planetary motion? The first law of planetary motion is sabi po niya the planets orbit in elliptical paths. May, ellip may elliptical path, katulad nung pinapakita po dito sa picture po natin. Yung mga planet, may elliptical path, sabi ni Johannes Kepler. With the sun at one focus. With the sun at one focus. Kaya tinawag niya yung first law niya na law of ellipses. The second law, sabi po ni Johannes Kepler, There is an imaginary line from the sun to the planet sweeps out equal areas and equal time of interval. So ayan. Ito yung may may color may colored po diyan. Yun yung tinatawag niya na equal areas. There is a line, imaginary line from the sun of a planet that sweeps out equal areas. Kaya tinawag niya po itong law of equal areas. Ayan. Nakikita niyo po may, may illustration naman nasa yung equal areas na tinatawag niya. Ayan po. Okay. And lastly, his third law, sabi po niya, the square of ratio of the periods of any two planets revolving around the sun is equal to the cube of the ratio of their average distances from the sun. In order, in other words, there is a distinct relationship between a planet's period and its distance from the sun. So may distinct relationship yan, yung period at yung distance ng planet from the sun. Ano ba yung period? It refers to the time it travels around the sun. Kaya tinawag niya po itong law of period. So pag sinabing distinct magkaiba yung nakadepende sa distance ng planet from the sun yung kanyang ikot hindi parehas hindi pare-parehas na 365 days and one half yung po yung ikot ng earth sa sun 365 days and one half one half pa one fourth basta ganun 
So sabi ni Johannes Kepler, it depends on the distance kung gaano kalayo. Ano ba yung pinakamalayong planet? Ano yung pinakamalapit na planet? Comment it down on the comment section. So Kepler managed to make these discoveries before Newton's laws of motion was formed. Okay? So showing Kepler here. Sabi niya, my hard work has paid off. You have something to take notes on your work hand. In conclusion, what did we learn today? Write down it, write it down on the comment section. How does this relate to what we already know? How about the history? What does such a rich and layered story imply? That's all for now. Thank you for watching. This is our second lesson for physical science, physics. Thank you for listening and watching. Happy learning, everyone. Thank you.